What's going on guys? Matthew Minis here. Welcome back to the channel. We have three passions, family, fitness, and finance. Today, we're going to talk about investing our money in QYield or NUSI, QYLD or NUSI. We're going to talk about two different strategies you can use when investing in these to generate more cash flow every month. The first strategy we're going to talk about is instead of using an emergency fund in a traditional bank account or even a high yield savings account, we're going to invest in QYield or NUSI or a combination of both, which is what I actually do, in order to generate monthly cash flow and increase our initial investment significantly faster than if you had just left your money in a traditional bank account. There will also be significant downside protection due to using NUSI, which has a protective put option as well. The other strategy, and this is going to be even more controversial, but just something to think about, is buying QYield or NUSI on margin. I know this is crazy and I do want to say that I'm not a financial advisor, so do your own research on this, but I kind of want to just get everyone thinking about it. Maybe you can let me know what, how you feel in the comments below. Let me know if you've ever invested on margin or if you think margin is the worst thing you could possibly do when it comes to investments. Either way, one of the strategies we're going to talk about is investing in one of those two assets or a combination of both and how that could potentially generate more cash flow for you on a monthly basis moving forward. So before we discuss the two strategies that I've mentioned, we need to talk about what QYield and what NUSI actually are. QYield is a passively managed ETF that produces high income on a monthly basis due to the fact that it sells and buys call options on the NASDAQ 100 index. NUSI is very similar, however NUSI also has downside protection because it also buys a protective put option with some of the premiums it brings in. So the first strategy that I want to talk about is potentially taking a portion, if not all, of your emergency fund and putting it into these investments, QYield and NUSI. Right now, I'm doing a 70% QYield and a 30% NUSI. And the reason for that is I actually want to generate some income off of my emergency fund. I don't like keeping my money in a traditional savings account where you get almost 0% interest for the entire year. And I also don't like to keep my money in a high yield savings account such as Ally where I get 0.5% over the entire year. 0.5% is not even equal to the monthly distribution from Q yield alone. Now we're going to look at a few examples of if we had taken $10,000 and put it into one of those accounts. So let's just say we took $10,000 and put it into Ally five years ago. Over those five years, we gained our 0.5% interest, and at the end of those five years, we have $10,249. If we had done the same thing, but with Q yield, and we're gonna use the actual history of Q yield and the actual dividend payout per month, we would have ended up with $16,701. Now, there were a couple corrections, for instance, during COVID back in March of 2020, where your total investment would have significantly decreased but over the past year, that money has come back and surpassed where it was beforehand. When we look at NUSI, it's a little bit harder because there isn't five years of history. NUSI is relatively new, so what I did is I took the average cost, which is $26.66, and I put that for all of the months that we don't have information for. I also took the average yield, which is 7.8%, and I put that for the months where we don't have an actual dividend history. If we had put $10,000 in NUSI five years ago, and we use those averages and model out or forecast out the results, we would have ended up with $15,250. Now there was also the same COVID correction during this time period. However, because NUSI has the downside protection, the decrease in total market value was significantly less than the decrease versus Q yield. So now let's look at a chart where we have a mixture of our investments. We took our $10,000, we put 70% into Q yield and 30% to the NUSI. This is a blue line. And then we have 50-50, which is the orange line. There's not much difference between the lines other than the dips where the blue line tends to dip a little bit more. During the pandemic of 2020, it looks like there was a dip of almost 13.5% if you had done the 70-30 versus only a dip of 11% when it comes to the 50-50. All in all, it's going to be up to you to determine how much risk you want to take. Clearly, the more NUSI you have in your portfolio is going to protect you during dips like that. However, you do have a little bit less income on a monthly basis, which you can use for those dividend reinvestments and to continue to grow your nest egg. The bottom line is, is with these high income producing ETFs, if you can get through a year or even two years, which would net almost a 20% gain from dividends alone, 
that's going to more than cover any corrections that can come in the market. Now, as I said before, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my thoughts and what I'm doing currently. Someone else in my family is doing the same thing. We've talked about investing our emergency fund. Now we're going to talk about the second strategy. This one is definitely more risky and may not be for everyone. However, I think it's a good way to generate a little bit more cash flow. And depending on who you are and what you need money for at that time, it could actually benefit you. We're going to talk about purchasing Q yield on margin. The first thing that we need to know is what is margin? Margin is when you borrow funds from your brokerage and it allows you to amplify your gains or your losses when it comes to a certain investment. So if you only have $10,000 to invest and you want to invest more money, you can borrow some money on margin and then just pay interest on it. If you think you're going to get a return of 8%, but the interest rate is only 2%, like M1 Finance, then altogether you're making a 6% gain. You have to remember though, volatility can severely affect your gains. And if you start going into the losses, then you could lose more money than you would have initially invested. You have to worry about margin maintenance and margin calls. The more risky your investments are, the higher your margin maintenance is gonna be. When the value of your assets drops to a certain number or the margin maintenance number, you're gonna be issued what's called a margin call. A margin call means you need to put money into your brokerage or sell some securities in order to pay that margin back or to bring that money above the margin maintenance amount. The good news is, is with investing in an ETF like QYield or NUSI, these are considered low volatility, so the margin maintenance is extremely low. It's very unlikely that you would hit the margin maintenance if you're borrowing margin and using it to purchase NUSI, for instance. So I've done an example where we take $10,000 of margin and we invest in QYield in order to get 456 shares at a share price of $21.91 back in July 1st of 2016. So we're using the previous history, we're gonna invest in margin, and we're gonna see how much money we make per month minus how much money we have to pay out in margin. If we do this in Robinhood, where today the interest rate is yearly 2.5% interest, plus you pay $5 per month for Robinhood Gold, in my formula, I've accounted for that also the $1,000 of margin that you get for free from Robinhood. So, in our first month, we would receive a $65 dividend, but we'd have to pay $24 in margin. Our total profit for month one would be $41. The next month would be very similar. We have to pay an additional margin cost. We've reinvested our dividends and we've gotten a lower dividend because the dividend payout wasn't as high. Our profit was only $35. However, the following month, the dividend payout went up significantly. We now have a profit of $65. If we did this, it would take us approximately 10 years to pay back the entire amount of the margin. So the $10,000 would now be worth $20,000. We could pay back the $10,000 of margin and then everything beyond that would be profit. Now, the $10,000 of margin going into Q yield is just one example. You could put the money into NUSI. You could put the money into any security, even crypto, although I, I definitely don't recommend you do that. I like to think of it as you're using someone else's money to make more money. You can use the monthly income to pay for a car payment pay for your mortgage, anything you like. It depends on how much money you have invested. Now, I'm not suggesting you go do this. However, if you were to multiply this by 10 and do $100,000 or a million dollars, you can quickly see how this can become an infinite money glitch. Once again, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not suggesting you to do this, but it is really cool to think about. So once again, today's video was all about two different strategies when it comes to using Q yield or NUSI or a combination of both. You can take some of your money from your emergency fund. You can put it into Q yield or NUSI. You can do the combination, which is what I do. By doing that, you get your high monthly dividends, reinvest them. That way, if the market goes down, you're still covered in case of any types of dips. And you can also take some money out on margin to increase your cash flow. You're borrowing someone else's money. You're paying a little bit of interest, but you're getting much more when it comes to your monthly dividend. If you found today's video interesting at all, please smash the like button down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about margin investing because I know a ton of people hate it. And I hope to see you in the next video. I make a video every Thursday at 3.15 Eastern time. See ya.